overhaul of fuel valves on 70, 80 and 90 MC engines. See Instruction Book, Volume 2, Procedure Numbers 901 and 909. Before any dismantling, drain the fuel oil from the fuel oil high pressure pipes. Using a hook spanner, loosen the union nut. Using a spanner, loosen the coupling fitted on each end of the high pressure pipe. The fuel oil high pressure pipes may also be of the double pipe design. See instruction book procedure numbers 901 and 909. Remove the high pressure pipe. Take care not to damage the high pressure pipe seatings. Disconnect the return oil pipe from the fuel valve. Mount protective plastic plugs in or on all high pressure seatings. Unscrew the retaining nuts and remove the spring housings. Remove the fuel valve from the cylinder cover using the lifting tool if the valve sticks. Thoroughly clean the fuel valve bore in the cylinder cover. Clean off any carbon deposits in the fuel valve bore with a carbon cutter. If marks are found on the seating in the bore, recondition the seating with a seating face cutter. Finally, grind the seating with a grinding mandrel and a grinding compound, for example carborundum number 200. After milling and grinding, thoroughly clean the bore and seating and check again that there are no signs of damage on the seating. After reconditioning the seating in the bore and thoroughly cleaning both bore and seating, 
Fit new O-rings on a new or overhaul fuel valve which has just been pressure tested and lubricate with molybdenum disulfide. Carefully mount the valve in the cylinder cover. To ensure that over tightening has not taken place, check that the locking and indicating pins have not been bent or broken off. In the event of over tightening, mount a new spring housing. We recommend that the calibration of new and especially old spring housings be checked before they are mounted on the engine or on the fuel valve test rig. Mount the spring housings and retaining nuts. Tighten the nuts until the top face of the pressure disc is flush with the top face of the spring housing. Reconnect the return oil pipe to the fuel valve. Check that there are no marks on the seating surfaces of the fuel oil high pressure pipe. If necessary, recondition the seatings as described in procedure number 909. On fuel oil high pressure pipes which are provided with a steel armoured protective hose, also check distance D, that is between the thrust bushing and the pipe end. See procedure number 909. Replace the O-rings and coat with molybdenum disulfide. Mount the fuel oil high pressure pipe. Adjust the torque spanner to the value indicated in procedure number 901. Tighten the coupling pieces using the torque spanner. Using the hook spanner, tighten the union nut. Close the fuel oil drain valve. Turn on the fuel oil supply. Remove the sealing rings and the plastic plugs. Set up the fuel valve in a bench vise provided with soft jaws. Start disassembling the fuel valve by screwing off the union nut with a hook spanner. When overhauling fuel valves, handle all parts with the utmost care and keep them completely clean. Slide the valve head clear of the valve housing. Remove the non-return valve, thrust spindle and thrust foot from the valve housing. Loosen the spindle guide with a soft hammer and remove the spindle guide and nozzle.
Remove and discard all ceiling rings. Clean all parts in gas oil and blow clean with compressed air. Carefully clean and examine the parts and, if necessary, grind the seating surfaces with a grinding mandrel and carborundum number 500. Use the milling or grinding tool if more serious damage has occurred on the seating surface for the high pressure pipe in the valve head. Use the milling tool if more serious damage has occurred on the seating surface for the high pressure pipe and the valve head. The diameter of the seating surface must not exceed the value stated in procedure number 909 in volume 2 of the instruction book. Set up the thrust spindle in a bench vise with soft jaws. Compress the spring for the thrust spindle to remove the tension on the circlips and then remove the circlips. Carefully clean and examine the parts and, if necessary, Grind the seating surfaces with a grinding mandrel and carborundum number 500. Remove the ceiling ring from the spindle guide. Disassemble the spindle guide with a brass mandrel and a hammer. Disassemble the non-return valve using the special tool. After grinding and milling, Clean the parts in gas oil and blow clean with compressed air. Use the special drills to clean off any carbon deposits in the central bore of the fuel valve nozzle or in the spray hose.
Test the spray holes with a test pin. If the test pin can be inserted into just one of the holes, or if the holes have become oval, the fuel nozzle must be discarded. Examine all seating surfaces of the non-return valve and spindle guide through a magnifying glass with an 8 to 10 times magnification. If there are pressing in marks or the like on the seats, mount a new non-return valve or a new spindle guide. Lapping of the internal seatings is not acceptable. Defective parts, with the exception of the spring, cannot be replaced individually. Remove any deposits on the sliding surfaces with a grade 360 emery cloth and oil. Lubricate all movable parts with molybdenum disulfide. Loosely assemble the non-return valve and the spindle guide. Make sure that the parts are perfectly aligned and position the special tool. Fit the parts firmly together by pressing down on the drilling machine handle. Starting with any additional discs, assemble the thrust spindle. Slightly compress the thrust spring and mount the circlips. Mount the fuel nozzle in the valve housing, making sure that it engages correctly with the guide pin. Mount a new sealing ring on the spindle guide. Coat with molybdenum disulfide and mount spindle guide, thrust foot, thrust spindle with the circlips facing the spindle guide and non-return valve. Mount a new sealing ring in the sealing ring groove. Mount the valve head, ensuring that the guide pin between the valve housing and valve head is correctly engaged so that it will prevent the parts from turning in relation to each other. Mount the union nut and tighten it with a hook spanner. Mount new sealing rings on the valve head and valve housing and mount protective plastic plugs. Overhauled fuel valves or fuel valves taken from stock must be function tested before they are mounted in the cylinder cover. The pressure testing pump is equipped with pressure gauges for displaying opening pressure, working pressure, venting function, and air inlet pressure. Position the fuel valve in the test rig. For guidance on how to operate the pressure testing pump, refer to the supplier's special instructions. To ensure that over-tightening has not taken place, Check that the locking and indicating pins have not been bent or broken off. In the event of over-tightening, mount a new spring housing. A very important element in the correct functioning of the fuel valve, both during testing and in service, is ensuring that the spring housings apply the predetermined tightening force. To ensure that this force is present, 
a special tool has been designed to check the calibration of the spring housings. We recommend that the calibration of new and especially old spring housings be checked before they are mounted on the engine or on the fuel valve test rig. Tighten the nuts until the top face of the pressure disc is flush with the top face of the spring housing. Connect the pressure testing pump and the return oil pipe to the fuel valve. Slowly fill the valve by pumping at low pressure until oil, without air bubbles, flows from the return oil pipe. Raise the pressure until it is above the opening pressure. Flush the valve for about five seconds. Slowly increase the pressure until it is about 50 bar below the specified opening pressure. See Instruction Book, Volume 2, Procedure Number 909. There will always be a certain amount of oil flowing from the return oil pipe when the fuel valve is full of oil and pressurized. Oil must not seep from the fuel valve nozzle holes until reaching a pressure of 50 bar below the specified opening pressure. If oil does seep from the fuel valve nozzles, See procedure number 909. Lapping of the internal seatings is not acceptable. Pump 5 to 10 strokes to fully open the valve and to blow out any dirt. Then relieve the pressure. Slowly increase the pressure until oil is emitted from all the atomizer holes. Read the actual opening pressure on the pressure gauge marked opening pressure. Compare the actual opening pressure with the pressure specified in procedure number 909 and, if necessary, insert or remove discs or replace the spring. Set up the thrust spindle in a bench vise with soft jaws. Compress the spring for the thrust spindle to remove the tension on the circlips and then remove the circlips. Starting with any additional discs, assemble the thrust spindle. Do not insert more than five extra discs when adjusting the pressure. Slightly compress the thrust spring and mount the circlips. The fuel valve must be retested after any adjustment.
If the quick pressure drop cannot be registered, the slide is sticking or the hole is blocked. Disassemble and examine the parts, replace if necessary. Slowly fill the valve by pumping at low pressure until oil, without air bubbles, flows from the return oil pipe. Remove the return oil pipe and block the outlet hole with a gasket and a plug screw. Increase the pressure to about 100 bar and move the control handle to the closed position. The pressure should now remain at 100 bar. If oil leaks at the union nut, replace the O-ring seal of the valve head. If oil leaks at the lower end of the valve, replace the O-ring seal on the spindle guide. After the fuel valve has passed all the tests, it can be mounted in the cylinder cover.